we have seen in a previous video that the decision tree tries to separate the two classes by taking a decision right somewhere in the middle of the two classes. So a decision tree tries to split the data in such a way that the two buckets which are created are entirely consist of one of the classes. This is what the decision tree tries to. It may not be successful in all cases. Sometimes it might be impossible to to separate the two classes but that 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 is the goal of a decision tree to uh, it tries as much as possible to separate the two classes to separate the pluses from the minuses so it takes a decision or it makes a split in such a way that pluses are separated from the minuses now let us uh, understand the theory let us define the theory behind the decision tree and and see and then we will look at the maths that happens at the back end so the objective of a decision tree, let us uh, see what the objective of a decision tree is. The objective is to create splits on independent variables. Remember, we were splitting the independent variable, not the dependent variable. Okay. So uh, the splits were being made in the independent variable space. So in the previous example, we split it on x1 and x2, not, not on, on y. y is our plus and minus why the separation of plus and minus is the result of the split but the splits are actually being made on on the independent variables so create splits on independent variables to form pure or homogeneous buckets what do i mean by pure or homogeneous buckets so buckets which entirely consist of either pluses or minus so this is what the decision tree tries to but it may not be successful all the time but that is the goal so that it can form pure or homogeneous buckets uh, or I can say buckets which have more of one class. So more of ones or more of zeros. So even, even a situation where you have, let's say we have a situation where we have two pluses and two minuses in the same bucket. Now this is, this is the worst form of impurity. This is an impure bucket. Why impure bucket? Because both are equal in numbers. So it is 50 50. This is the worst form of impurity. So what is, even if I am able to make it like this, let's say 1 plus and 2 minus, this is better. This is still pure compared to that because I have 2 minuses here. I have 2 minus, so I have more of one class and less of the other class. Similarly, even if I am able to form 2 plus and 1 minus, this is better than this one. So this is, this is worst. This is better. And even this is better compared to the first one. 2 and 3 are better because they have more of one of the labels. This has equal number of both labels. This is the worst form of impurity. Of course, if you can get to this level, number 4, this is the best. So this has zero impurity. Why zero impurity? Because both are pluses. There is no impurity here. It is entirely made of pluses. So that is the goal of a decision tree to ultimately reach to this stage. Sometimes it may not be able to reach to this stage, but at least it will, it will come till this stage. So it will, it will move out of, of this worst form of impurity. So that is the goal of a decision tree. And where are the splits made? We have seen the splits are made at the midpoints of consecutive pair values of independent variables. So we, I intentionally split this at 2.5 because it was midpoint of 2 and 3. Otherwise, we can draw infinite number of lines between 2 and 3. So there would be a confusion that which line to select because there can be infinite number of lines and all of these lines will be able to perfectly split the pluses from the minuses. So which line do we select? We select the line which passes right through the middle of the consecutive points. Now the question is how do we measure impurity? So we were talking about creating pure buckets or hom uniform buckets or homogeneous buckets. How do we create them? Now. A computer will not draw plots like this. So this is for human understanding that I have drawn this. A computer will not draw plot like this and then decide where to split. Or imagine if you have 10 independent variables, then your data would be into 10 dimensions. Coming up with a plot and then figuring out where to split would be almost next to impossible. So how do we do that in that case or how does a computer do that? So that is where we go to the underlying maths of a decision tree. We have a variable, a parameter called guinea index. So guinea index is a mathematical parameter which measures the impurity in a bucket. So guinea index is a mathematical parameter which measures the impurity in a bucket. Remember, it measures the impurity. And what is the goal of a decision tree? The goal of a decision tree is to form pure buckets. So the goal would be to minimize the impurity, to minimize Gini index. The goal of a decision tree would be, let me write it down here. It would be to minimize this quantity. 
it would be to minimize the value of Gini index and as it minimizes the value of Gini index it indirectly increases the purity of the bucket which is the goal of a decision tree. Now how is Gini index measured? It is a mathematical quantity which is measured by this formula 1 minus summation of pk whole square. Now what is pk? pk is the proportion of each class in each bucket. We will see this with an example in details but this is the formula. It is a proportion of each class so if you have a binomial class it is the proportion of zeros and the proportion of ones in each of the buckets. If you are splitting into two buckets, you will calculate the proportion of zero in bucket one and proportion of one in bucket one and then similarly you will calculate the proportion of zero in bucket two and one in bucket two. And M represents the number of classes you have. So we usually deal with a binomial classification problem. In that case M will be equal to two in case of a binomial classification. Now let us see this with an example. Let us see how do we calculate Gini index and how does it help a decision tree come up with the appropriate split with an example. So let me take a very small data. I am taking a small data because it involves manual calculation. The computer does this for us so we don't need to do this. But to understand the maths this is important. So let us so let's say this is our data. I have two variables x1 and x2 and so where would we split here? We have already seen this example. We would probably split at somewhere here. Somewhere here we would split and this would give us pure buckets, exactly pure buckets. Now why did we split here? Because the Gini index as a result of this split would, we will see now that it turns out to be the least. And, and remember that is the goal of a decision tree to minimize the value of Gini index. So let me write down the goal. The goal is to minimize the value of Gini index. And we will see now that once I split here, the Gini index will become the minimum. Now let's say somebody else does not agree to this and he says that no, I will I will make a split, let's say here. He, he is adamant on making a split here, he makes a split here. So I will calculate the Gini index for both green split and the red split and we will see which gives us the lesser value of Gini index. And whichever give, whichever split out of green and red, whichever gives us the least value of Gini index, we will be selecting that split. So let's calculate. Now before we calculate the, before we in fact uh, go ahead with a split, let us calculate the Gini index present in our data entirely before we split. So what we try to do using a decision tree is we try to reduce the value of Gini index or we try to reduce the impurity. So first we will have to calculate what is the impurity that we are starting with so that we can reduce it further. So let me write it down here. I'll write before split. So let me use the same formula 1 minus summation of pk whole square and before split I, I do not have any split so this all the points are in one bucket the entire data is in one bucket so how will I do this 1 minus this is the proportion so proportion of plus let me write the proportion of plus whole square and then since I have a summation sign I will write proportion of minus whole square so let us calculate this. 1 minus proportion of plus whole square. What is the proportion of plus? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points in plus and total I have 5 points in minus also. So the total becomes 10. This is the proportion remember. So it is 5 by 10 whole square and once again I have 5 by 10 whole square because I have 5 plus points and 5 minus points. So this gives me so 5 by 10 into 2. So this will give me 2 into 1 by 4 so this will cancel out and it will give me 1 by 2 so 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 will give me 1 by 2 so it gives me 1 by 2 so I get 0.5 as the answer so this is this is my guinea index before split now remember I just I briefly talked earlier that this is the worst form of impurity you can get where you have equal number of pluses and minuses in the same bucket. Remember before split everything belongs to the same bucket. I have equal number of pluses and minuses in the same bucket. This is the worst form of impurity and the worst form of impurity is giving us a guinea index of 0.5. So what does this tell us? This tells us that the worst value of guinea index or the maximum value of guinea index is 0.5. Gini index cannot go beyond 0.5. This is the worst form of impurity. Now let us go ahead with the split. Now after split. Now let us see which split 
is better. First, I will calculate the Gini index for the red split. So let me calculate for red split first. So the red split happens here. I have two buckets now in the red split. I have, let me call this bucket one and this bucket two. So first I'll calculate the Gini index for bucket one. So bucket one, what is the Gini index? It is one minus. Now proportion of plus in bucket one. How many pluses do I have? One, two, three, four. I have four plus in bucket one and total how much do I have? I have five. So four by five whole square plus I have one minus. So one by five whole square. So this is the value of Gini index. I will, let me directly take it. 4, 4, 16 and 1, 17. So this is, let me calculate this quickly with a calculator. So 25 minus 17 by 25, it gives me 0 0.32. So this is the value of Gini index in bucket 1, 0 0.32. Similarly, I will calculate the Gini index in bucket 2. So let me quickly do this. I have 1 plus and 1, 2, 3, 4 minus. So this is similar. I'll get similar answer because this, this will come here and this will go there. The proportions interchange here. So I think I'll get the same answer here as 0 0.32. So this is the Gini index in bucket 1 after the red split and this is the Gini index in bucket 2 after the red split. So the total Gini index after split total Gini index after the red split, after red split. Now, how do we calculate the total? We don't just add them up. We take a weighted average. So weighted average, weighted by the number of points they have. So the number of, let me write the formula for that. The number of points in bucket one into Gini index of bucket one plus number of points in bucket two into Gini index of bucket two and all of this divided by total number of points so n total this will be the guinea index after split okay so let's calculate this what is the number of points in bucket one i have five points so five into 0.32 and here as well i have five points so again 0.32 into five divided by total 10 points i have so how much would this give me so 5 plus 5, so it would give me the same answer as, as both has equal number of points. So I would get a guinea index of 0 0.32 after the red split. So see, the guinea index reduces. Initially, we started with a guinea index of 0 0.5. And even the red split gives us, reduces the guinea index. So it does reduce impurity to some extent. It reduces it to 0 0.32. But remember, we will select that split which gives us the least value of guinea index. So let us see what guinea index do we get after doing the green split so now let's calculate the guinea index with green split so again even when we do a green split we divide the points into two buckets so this is my bucket one and bucket two let's calculate the guinea index for the first bucket so we can see the first bucket has only minuses i have five minus points so let me calculate for bucket one. I have five minus points here. So remember, I will write the proportion of minus five minus points divided by total. I don't have any plus, so it is five. And I have zero plus points and total is also five. So I'll do this. This is the guinea index in bucket one after the green split. So one minus one, it gives me zero. So the guinea index is zero in bucket one. Similarly, if you calculate for bucket two, again, bucket two has only plus points. So again, this will interchange and I will get another zero. So the weighted average of zero and zero is again zero. So Guinea index after the green split is zero. Now what do we see? We see that we started with a Guinea index of 0.5 and the red split gave us a Guinea index of 0.32, which is less, but not the least. And the green split gave us a Guinea index of, of zero, exactly zero. So this means that the green and, and Guinea index cannot go below this. This is the purest form. You can see it is, it is the purest form. We have entirely split our labels into pluses and minus. So this is as pure as it can be. And the Guinea index for that is zero. So this tells us that the green split is better than any other split. So we tried with one. You can try with any other split in this case. None of the splits will be as good as the green split. 
So the green split is the best one and hence the decision tree will select the green split. So this is what the algorithm does. Once you run the algorithm using codes which we will see in a later video, the algorithm will try all possible splits and finally select the one which gives the least value of Gini index. Some In some cases it, it may not be able to arrive at the final Gini index of zero but the Gini index whatever it arrives at will definitely be lesser than what it started with. So the Gini index after split will definitely be lesser than the Gini index before split. So this is how it works. This is how we this is the maths behind a decision tree algorithm.